Welcome back to The Edge. It is time now for our game time segment. We've got lots coming up tonight. We're going to talk wrestling, we're going to talk swimming and diving, basketball, all on the agenda. Uh, here's sorted all out. We've got our prep expert, Doug Ritchie. Doug, uh, some exciting days. Oh, absolutely. And today was kind of a, a great day for basketball fans, at least on the boys' side. Brackets came out. We know where everyone is now. Now we start thinking, who's going to go where? It's going to be a lot of good things, I think, happening for our local teams. A lot of those matchups are now set, and the teams can start looking forward and mm -hmm. saying, oh, this is what we have to do if we want to get to Madison. High school basketball, 10 days from the start of regionals. Uh, we got brackets today. We're going to start with that, and we'll start in Division One and Division Two. Division One, we've got De Pere and Oshkosh North from our area as top seeds, and then Kakana in Division Two gets a top seed. You know, I, I think Seymour a three seed, and not that Seymour's getting slighted, but they're one of the hotter teams in the state. They're hot right now. They're going to win the Bay, at least share the Bay. The problem with them is they were 0-5 in their league up to this point. They had slotted them down. Nobody wants Seymour at all in the postseason. Those sophomores <laughs> that they have, Cohen and Oski, not sophomores anymore. They're playing really good. Yeah, exactly. So these are the folks that we will see as number one seeds in Division One and Two. All right, Division Three now. Little Shoot's been dominant all year, but they faltered the last couple of weeks. So look at the number one seed, Doug. Good deserved. Yeah, it is, and they're, they're still a really good ball club. And if you look at their bracket, they got a good shot at going back to Madison. Now you still got to play and win these games. Interesting. They got freedom in their bracket. Freedom beat them. Mm -hmm. So they they got potential. FBL is also in that bracket. FBL beat them. They got potential landmines, but I think the fact that they got beat by these teams, they'll get their attention if they need them. A little bit of a wake-up call for them. Let's take a look at the rest of the, our divisions. As we say, Little Shoot getting a number one seed. Brilliant Omro, Sheboygan Falls, all also getting it's a very strong basketball Division Three in our area. Division Four, Oscar Lords, Laconia, and then Division Five, Sheboygan Area, Lutheran. Which of these teams do you see best chance to get into Madison here, Doug? I like Little Shoot. I like Omro. And I like Sheboygan area Lutheran with Sam Decker. Mm. I think he's going to end New Lutheran's run at two years in a row. Could do. Uh, yeah, could do. Decker's a solid player. And in that, yep. in that league, in that division, you can ride a guy oh, yeah. through into the, into the state tournament. Well, speaking of basketball, this week a very interesting one for the future of the actual tournament itself. WIA Board of Control, acting on the President Anderson's recommendation, voted to award the five-year contract to PMI. They manage the Rush Center in Ashwaubenon. However, not a deal, done deal yet, Doug, uh, but it's looking like it's leaning toward the uh, Green Bay area. Yeah, and I, I think you know they gave Madison one chance maybe to save this. I, I think it's just a matter of time before we see hoops at the Rush Center in March, which is going to be awesome. Well, you know, they made you were there at the Board of Control meeting. Yep. You saw the presentations, and it was a very strong PMI presentation. Yeah, I left that day, and I thought PMI was great. I thought Madison was unprepared or just thought they, hey, we're Madison, we're going to have this. Now they're finding out they probably won't. Well, essentially, WIA is giving Madison a second chance to try to figure out those scheduling problems, but no definite timeline here. Tradition does count for something, but economics, well, sometimes they win it. I think our whole community has wonderful memories of, of Madison. Wonderful tradition in high school basketball uh, with, with, with State being, being at Madison. We know uh, we have great friends and uh, a great venue in Green Bay, so the opportunity to potentially um, work on these events, sure, that's, that's fun and exciting. Uh, the Cole Center is the ideal venue in our minds. Uh, the unfortunate part is that there are conflicts. Conflicts including Big Ten hockey, the possibility yep. of uh, bidding for the women's Frozen Four, which is, of course, big for the university. And, you know, Barry Alvarez has said it's about the university first, yeah. to be honest with you. And, and, you know, from his point of view, that's what it's got to be. we got to think about Madison. we got to think about UW hockey and whatever else. Then the WIA, and the, and the problem is there's just the colliding right now. There's just not enough open dates to keep it at the Kohl Center. Good for us. Yeah, exactly. And part of what PMI was talking about in their presentation was, hey, come to come, you can be a first-class citizen. Absolutely. Basically, you'll get the building, you get the run of the place. Hey, we'll we'll block those times off. We'll get you preferred parking. We'll relax some of the hotel regulations. Uh, so all of that looks like that is well on its way. I would expect to see something around the time that the boys' state playoffs get going yep. there about second week of March, I think second, one, third week. I think one of the biggest things is parking. Parking down in Madison is not easy. No. Here, got Lambeau Field. It'll yeah. be really easy to set that up. Yeah, it, and I expect that that'll, that'll end up going through. We've talked to both those sides this, uh, this week. It looks like it's going to happen. Still some uh, conferences, of course, this year to be decided before we get to the state playoffs that will be in Madison this year. We start with this week's <laughs> game of the week for the boys. It was in the FRCC. De Pere did get a top seed today, taking on Bayport. We got some tremendous games of the week this year. Doug. This was a dandy. Uh, this lived up to everything. 57-54. De Pere 
uh, they clinched the conference and they also got the number one seed. This was the game for the number one seed. Yeah, it really was because one of these two teams was going to get that top spot and, uh, you know, big late three wrapping it up for them. Wrapped up the conference as well. Uh, they've still got though, time left. Got a prime for the postseason. We're going into this one. We've got a great week of practice coming up next week. We need to continue to get better to prepare ourselves for the tournament. And we're not going to do anything different. I want to go into the tournament with a lot of momentum. Uh, you know, and, and I want to cap off a conference undefeated season. I think that's important. You don't, you don't want to mess around with the last game. So no resting anybody late here? <laughs> no, this isn't the NFL. They're going to play. 15-0 uh, for DePier in conference. So it's, uh, they've all but locked it up. 20, 20 and and one. Is this a better DePierre team than last year? You know, I asked Jordan Poitras that yeah. Yeah, uh, the other night, and he thinks so. Yeah. And he's more of a player than sure he does. Team. Yeah. And yeah, hopefully so they are. That means they, they get one more win. Interesting here, Bayport, Sheboygan North, they're going to hit each other very likely. That's why Friday's win was big. I don't, Sheboygan North is real dangerous, and now Bayport's got to beat them a second time. Yeah. All right, well, let's move on to the girls now. We had a very similar matchup <laughs> earlier this week. Focus on the FRCC tonight <laughs> because of the Bayport DePierre matchup, big for the girls as well. Both of those in our Fox 11 top 11 uh, also. It was a Redbird sweep, though, in these two matchups, Doug, as uh, it's appear very solid. And they've come on very strong after a little rocky start this year. Yeah, they have not lost in 2012. I saw their last loss, and since that time... Your fault, then? Is what uh, pretty much. I told <laughs> Kelly McNiff it wasn't my fault. <laughs> and she agreed, because it wasn't hers. <laughs> but this team, I asked uh, Kayla Dawson after the game, what's the difference? Defensive intensity? Bayport found that out. They only scored 34 points. Bayport's a very good offensive team and DePierre just shut them out. A comfortable win for DePierre, and as you mentioned, Coach McNiff saying offense not necessarily what's doing the winning for I think our defensive pressure. I, you know, we played really great defense. Bayport's known for great defense, and I think uh, kids took that to, to heart a little bit and want to show that we play just, just as good and, and putting a lot of pressure on them, making them uncomfortable. And really, our defense kind of tends to become our offense. Uh, and you can go a long way with great defense, especially girls basketball. If you can lock down your opponent, you, you don't have the same type of slashers and people that can beat the double teams. And so, you know, it's such a team, a great team game for the girls. If you're able to play that team defense, you can go a long way. With yeah, it. And, and they're going to win the, the FRCC, which is a very good Division One, Division Two caliber conference. It appears a team to watch. They're going to make a deep run. Well, girls will get their seedings coming up next week. And here's a look at some of the likely number ones for the girls. Some possibilities. Talk about DePierre in Division One, most likely. Uh, Notre Dame you like as well. Algoma, Oshkosh, Lord, brilliant, uh, for all in the mix. Yeah, I, I think four of those five will get it. I, Algoma or Lords gets it. They'll see each other in the sectionals. The Pier gets it. Brilliant gets it. Mm. So th there's a lot of, uh, we have a lot of really good teams. And um, there are going to be some deep runs made by these schools. Also New London, they're, they're a lock for number one team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, still some conferences, of course, with something to decide this next week. And that's what, of course, we'll see in our games of the week this week. Girls game of the week is going to be Kimberly Appleton East as Kimberly is trying to get in there in the FEA. Yeah, you know, this isn't settled yet. Appleton East has got a big week. they got Kimberly. they got to go to Appleton North Friday, big robbery game. This is not settled. This is a big game Tuesday. Let's look at our boys game of the week now as West Pier and Seymour in the Bay. And we talk about Seymour uh, kind of peaking here as they're trying to wrap up the Bay. Yeah, the, Seymour's got that share. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks ago, it didn't look like they had a chance. <laughs> no. John Murphy knows what he's doing. Yeah. But West Pier with the win here can tie. That would be great because West Pier would say, hey, you know what? Yeah, Jay Tollison's pretty good, but we play <laughs> basketball here too. Exactly. <laughs> All right, time now for our play of the week. It is our... No problem. Play of the week brought to you by Dermatology Associates back at the Pier Bayport. Ah, the game winner. Jordan, Jordan Poydras just stone cold, Doug. Great shot. Uh, it's our Dermatology Associates. No problem. Play of the week. Well, we uh, still have other sports going on uh, around the area as well, as we've been talking uh, basketball for the last little while. Uh, also, wrestling uh, is going on. And uh, wrestling, they're going to get to their individual state tournament this weekend. Some guys from our area that are going at Coleman, of course, always has a boatload of wrestlers going out there. I think they've got, uh, they got 11, of, 11 of them going this year. Uh, this is from the Kakana Divisional, by the way, uh, Division I section of Kakana, 160 pounds. That was Kakana's Travis Vanderheil going. He's going to go to state. 182 pound semis, Nina's Ryan Bonakowski, who is uh, also uh, headed in there, uh, going to state. Uh, so, congratulations to all those guys headed out to state. Should be a, a fun tournament this weekend. Get the individual this weekend, team then the next weekend. It's interesting to qualify for team for the boys. Uh, one week, you got to wait a couple of weeks before you compete uh, in the team as well. Uh, swimming now and diving. Uh, this was state tournaments this last weekend. 200 freestyle, Jared Klinka, Klinka of Ashwaubenon, great swimmer, got second. Tim Halverston of Teal, third. 
in theirs. Got all the way, uh, the old uh, shaved heads for <laughs> Absolutely. Any, anything to get faster in the pool. That's a good look for you, Doug. I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, as uh, we saw, Keel ended up fourth as a team, actually on sixth. Division one states with me, Jake Lotto of Appleton Northeast Co-op, claiming a state title 200 free. Congratulations, Jake. Uh, he also took second in the 100 free, Appleton Northeast fourth in the 400 freestyle. Really? So congratulations uh, to all of them.